Let's go now to Dr. Todd Dorfman, an emergency medicine doctor based in Boulder, Colorado. Doctor, thank you for, for coming on the show. Boy, you are the man. I've been in your emergency room. You run that thing like a tight ship. Tell us what, what you're looking for with coronavirus, COVID-19. What, what are the protocols you're looking to use, employ, and what are your concerns? Uh, hi, hi, Eric. Yes. Um, COVID-19, in terms of our response from uh, a community and from an emergency department, really starts out in the uh, EMS world. Those are the emergency medical services people. So this starts when someone calls into uh, one of our dispatch centers. You know, that would be a 911 type call. I'm having a respiratory problem, a fever, chills, whatever it is. We've put in place a specific screening protocol calls at the dispatch level for the entire city and county of Boulder and we're following all of the Metro Denver and Colorado State guidelines also and that's all being dictated um, down uh, from uh, our uh, experts nationally. Well, well, doc, give us, um, give us a sense. We got it. We, I, I got that part, but what does that mean? So are our EMS workers going to yeah. go out with masks on, glasses on, gloves? Yes. Tell us. Yes. Yes. So right now, um, originally we thought that um, we needed to use some specific types of masks called N95 masks, goggles, and uh, full gown and glove protection. Um, this disease is actually uh, spread by droplets, okay? It is not like measles where you breathe on someone um, and you get it. So we are actually at this point, due to limited uh, personal protective equipment, we are sending people out with normal surgical masks, gowns, gloves and goggles um, when anyone tests uh, uh, screens positive for a potential COVID-19 case. So we are taking specific precautions in the field. We're only sending one um, emergency uh, service provider in um, and we are sending only the full team in if there's a life or limb threatening situation. And then, uh, Eric, we need to decide on transport. In other words, we can't overwhelm our healthcare system on the other end with a bunch of people who don't require urgent or emergent care. So we're making, um, some, based on the uh, state of emergency in Colorado, the medical directors are allowed to make some exceptions and leave people at home who should not be overwhelming our system. And so, this is all about protecting a surge. Right, right, right. And surge, and that is what the, what the, with, yeah. with the, with the panic and with, the, with the, so many unknowns, people may yes. try and call 911 because they have... I don't know, trouble breathing, it may be nothing, nothing other than maybe a little COPD or something, whatever. My point is now, when, now yes. you've got this EMS worker who, who brings a patient in, they present with, yep. what are you looking for? What is Dr. Dorfman looking for when they see someone to, to specifically yep. look for COVID-19? Well, it's a, that's an incredibly difficult question because, um, as you know, the spread is significant and there may or may not have been known exposure. So originally, this was easy. It was, there wasn't very much in the United States. And part of our screening questions were, have you traveled to you know, Italy, South Korea, Iran, China, and or have you been exposed to a COVID-19 positive patient um, in that sense? So anyone who hit positive on that screening uh, was was put through a special protocol and specific testing. Now, unfortunately, it's in the state of Colorado, as it is everywhere. There's probably way more cases than we even know about. So we are literally treating everyone like they have a COVID infectious disease. And how, is that time, how, does that differ, how does that differ from someone with a severe influenza virus? It doesn't, to be honest with you. And, and we probably should be always doing this, and we should probably be diligent about this every time there's a flu season. Um, if you look statistically across the globe, um, this really is very similar to influenza without an influenza vaccine. In other words, you know, let's say half the population gets the influenza vaccine and that vaccine is 50% you know, effective or so. That's about 25% of the population, you know, roughly, that is protected to some extent against influenza. The problem with this novel or new coronavirus is we really don't have a vaccine. So it's really new to the general public and that's the issue really is so many people could potentially get the disease. Even if the morbidity and mortality rates are similar to influenza, this just might be a bulk of people that get the disease. It just might be a bigger number. Mm. Dr. Todd Dorfman, we say thank you very much. We'd like to uh, you know, keep you on the list because it looks like this is going to be around for a while. We'll bring you back, Todd. Thank you very much for your time. 
thank you so much for having me.